Hello and welcome to Starfish Maths. My name's Sarah and today I want to look at finding the points of intersection on graphs between lines, curves and circles. I'm going to use four examples slowly increasing in difficulty. These are exam style questions, so grab a pen and paper and have a go along with me. The very last example uses factorising and solving cubic polynomials, which is pretty difficult. So it might be worth checking out my other video on the factor and remainder theorem. I hope you enjoy it. Let's get started. OK, let's start with these two equations here. They're both linear, so they're both straight lines, which means that if they cross, they'll only cross the once. So we're only looking for one solution. Now, whenever you're looking for when two graphs intersect, you're looking for the point where both of the equations hold true. So, in other words, that's where both of the equations work with the same solution. Now, the way to find that solution is to solve them simultaneously. Obviously, with two linear equations like this, you can use elimination or substitution, but I recommend using substitution because that's the only method that you can use when they become more complex. The other examples we're going to look at will be curves and circles and that kind of thing, so you can only actually use substitution. So try and get into that habit. Now the second equation here is already set up for y equals, so we can directly substitute all this stuff in for y in the first equation. So we're going to rewrite this first equation, but replace y with 2x plus 9. Now we can collect the terms and solve. OK, now that we've got the x-coordinate where they cross, we can get the y-coordinate without too much trouble. We'll substitute that into one of these equations. This one looks the easier one, so let's use that. The y-coordinate is 5, so this is the coordinates of where they cross. Now, it's a good idea to check that's right. We can use the, this equation that we haven't used yet to substitute in the numbers we've got and see if it holds. Fantastic! I love it when it works. OK, this second example is a little harder. They're not both linear this time. The first one is linear, so that's going to be a straight line. The second one, though, is quadratic, so that will be a parabola shape. So if they do cross, it will be a maximum of twice. Again, we're going to use the substitution method. Now, it's best to rearrange the linear equation to get y equals or x equals, probably y here because it's on its own, and substitute it then into this equation. So let's do that. That's the first equation rearranged, so we're going to substitute y in this equation for 5x minus 8. Get everything on one side equal to zero and solve that quadratic. It's good to just check for common factors and this does have a common factor of two in every term. So let's divide both sides by two. Now you can use quadratic formula, factorise or complete the square. I think I'm going to factorise. So there are two solutions, and we found the x-coordinates, we just need the y-coordinates. This one, of course, is the easiest one to substitute it into. In fact, I'll use this version here. OK, so we've got the two solutions of where they cross, and of course, use the second equation to just check those are right. Now if you've done circles work already, you'll notice that this first equation is a circle and the centre would be minus 3, 1, the radius would be root 50. So that is a circle and obviously this one's linear, it's a straight line. Again, the maximum number solutions is 2, so we're probably going to end up with a quadratic equation giving us two solutions. Now we're going to do this the same way as we did the other one. We're going to rearrange the linear equation. I'm going to rearrange it for x 
instead of y because it's got nothing in front of it, it's a bit easier, and substitute that into the other equation for x. Let's do that. After simplifying this bracket, I've written the bracket twice for both of them because they're squared. You must remember that if you've got a bracket squared, it's itself times itself. Don't be tempted just to say that's y squared minus 1 squared. You have to do all the multiplying out of the two brackets. So multiply those out, collect the terms, get everything on one side equal to zero and solve the quadratic equation. Do you pause the video and come back to compare. Okay, I hope you got the same answers as me there. Okay, I hope you got the same answers as me. I ran out of room down here, so I didn't show my working really. But what I did was I substituted my y values into this equation here, the easiest one just to get the x values. So let's check those answers by putting them into the circle equation. I've completely run out of room, so I'm just going to clear some space. Fantastic, I love it when it works. Okay, let's do the last example. This one's the hardest one of all. You're going to need to be able to do long division for this, so if you want to flick back to one of my other videos on that, you can and come back. The first equation is a cubic, which has that kind of shape, and this one's a linear, which is obviously a straight line. So actually, this one's gonna have a maximum of three solutions. Alright, so let's start the same way as we always have. Let's rearrange the linear equation. We'll do y equals, that's one on its own, and substitute it into this equation here. Get everything on one side equal to zero. Now solving cubic equations can be a bit tricky, but we're given in the question one of the solutions already. The question has told us that one of the solutions is that x equals three. And by the factor theorem, if that's the solution of this equation, then a factor will be x minus three. Remember that you need to change the sign of the solution for the factor. Now if you know that this is a factor of this one, if you divide that in, then you'll get the remainder, and then we can factorise the remainder. So it's time for long division. Do it any way you like. I use the grid method, but you might want to use a traditional long division like you do with numbers. Okay, I hope you followed that. I used the long division to get the remainder, which I put there. So we know from this equation up here, we've now factorised it into that and that part. We can now factorise further, factorise that last bracket. I have used my cross method of factorising there, but of course use whichever method you like.
Those are the x solutions and we can substitute them into this one here to get the y solutions. And we've done it. We found the three different places where these two graphs cross. Very well done if you got that right. We haven't checked it, and of course we would normally use the other equation, we haven't used the top one here. Because it's got the x cubed in, that might take you a little while. Um, so in an exam, only do that if you've got time left over at the end. If not, just do a quick check first, just gaze through your workings. To be honest, if you got to this point here and it didn't divide properly, you would know you made a mistake somewhere. So if it all factorises beautifully, chances are you've got it right. But if, again, if you have time at the end of an exam, you could use that substitution just to check those answers. Well, thank you so much for watching. Keep practising those and have fun.